Now that we have the Angular CLI installed, let's double check to make sure, ng-v, and ng is the global command that we're gonna have to be able to work with the Angular CLI. ng-v, you can see that I am running Angular CLI at version 1.7.2, and between this video and the last video, I updated my node version just so I was more current, and also I changed my command line to be a little black on the background instead of that blue. All right, well, now that we have our actual ng angular CLI command, we can clear this, and let's start up a new website, and this will be very easy. We are gonna say ng new. Let's go my angular site, and this is going to be the name of our new application, and enter. Angular will go ahead and create all of the files for us. All right, now that that's done, Angular has created a brand new Angular application for us. Now, this may be a little daunting as soon as we open this up because this is a fully fledged Angular app and it has so many great things out of the box for us, which may not be the case for what we need for this simple website to get started. So let's open this up in code, my Angular site. And I'll be using VS Code for this if you wanna know more about VS Code and why I think it's probably the best editor out right now. For JavaScript development, uh, check out my Getting Started with VS Code course. But let's open this up in code and let's zoom in a little bit here and we'll take a look at the file structure that we have. Now the Angular framework does a lot for us and it already comes out of the box. It has testing for us so we can do tests for our website. Now remember, we wanna use these cool new ES6 functions and features but browsers don't really fully support ES6 just yet, and that's why a lot of the applications you see now in JavaScript are using transpilers. Angular uses TypeScript, which also gives us a transpiler, so that means it takes our ES6 code and it compiles it down to ES5 code so that the browsers can read it. And this is all because we want to use cool, new, forward-thinking features, but browsers just aren't updating fast enough. And if you are on the React side, you're also using a transpiler, you're using Babel. And Babel takes your ES6 code down to ES5. So wherever you are in the JavaScript land right now, you're probably going to be using a transpiler to get your code ready for browsers to read. And that's what this tsconfig and tslint are for. And we have our tests for Karma and Protractor. And if we look at our package.json, let's take a look at the packages needed for an Angular app. You have Angular Animations, Angular Common, Compiler, Core, Forms, HTTP, Platform Browser, and this is cool because we can start deploying our Angular apps server-side instead of just in the browser, the router, and then Core.js is a polyfill. RxJS is really cool reactive extensions for JavaScript that give us observables, which uh, is taking the JavaScript world by storm right now. And Zone.js is something that Angular uses under the hood for a lot of cool things like change detection and more. And these are all the development dependencies that won't make it into our production builds, but are helpful for building in development. And you have the CLI, the compiler, and a lot of this Jasmine and Protractor and Karma stuff are for tests. And then you also have TypeScript right here. So all of that goes into an Angular application, and these are the packages that are pulled in from NPM. But don't worry about any of that. You don't have to think about any of that. The Angular CLI handles it. And I know that these newer JavaScript frameworks can seem a little daunting with how many packages they pull in and stuff like that if you're coming from jQuery, but it's a lot of really good stuff for more scalable applications. All right, let's keep going. The way we're gonna work is all in the source folder. We have our app, our assets, where you're gonna put images and SAS files and stuff like that, environment files. This is really great because let's say you have an API URL for development and then you also have one for production. You can add those here for production and for development. You have base styles, more TypeScript stuff here. And let's see, our application, this is where we're gonna do most of our work. We're gonna have an app module, an app component, and then an app component HTML and CSS. And also, app component spec is a test for the app component. Now in the next lesson, we're gonna go over all of the kind of core fundamental features like modules and components, 
But now I want to focus on the CLI. And this is what the CLI does for us. But this is a fully fledged Angular application. I want to get us to a little bit of a simpler application. And one thing I want to note is let's open app component TS. This is what a component looks like in Angular. And the JavaScript world has been moving towards components as well, which a component is exactly a JavaScript class or a JavaScript function. And then if you look at the template, there's a template and style. So you have three parts to each component. You have styles, the template, and the actual JavaScript, which is the class. And components are really great for structuring our application and building them to be very modular. So the cool thing about Angular is they give you styles and templates in separate files. But since we're building a simple application, I kind of want these to be inline here so that our entire component lives in one file. So let's see how the Angular CLI can help us a little bit more. And let's go back to our command line. Clear this out. I want to, well, let's close out this VS Code window. I want to give us a simpler Angular CLI project to work with. So we're going to rm rf. So this deletes the entire folder, my Angular site. I want to start a minimal website. And the way we do that is we are going to say ng new dash dash minimal my Angular site. Now notice there are far fewer files that are created for us. And that's because there are no tests in a minimal Angular application. And there are no separate HTML and CSS files. So all of it lives in that one component file. And let's see if we can find it. Yep, down here, app.component.ts and app.module.ts. Those are the two main files that we're going to need. Great. Let's try opening this up now. Code. Let's say code my Angular site. And notice there are far fewer setup files. There's no testing files. We just have our package.json package lock, which is for NPM to know what packages Angular CLI config and our source. We open up app, we have two files, and this is where we're going to be working. We have our app component and notice the template right here, instead of being in a separate file is inline and the styles are inline as well. And then we have our JavaScript class. Now this is great as a minimal application, but I want to, sorry, go back and do it one more time. I want to add routing. And I also want to make sure that instead of CSS, we're using SAS because a lot of our current applications are going to use SAS. It's just a better way to write CSS than CSS. One last time, let's go back, clear this RMRF, my Angular site. And I promise this is the last time. Once we're done with this, we will be ready to work with our application. Oh, device or resource busy. We have to close VS Code. Let's try that again. That works. And finally, ng new, we want it to be minimal. And since we have multiple pages, normally you'd have to bring in a router. We can just tell the Angular CLI to do that for us. We could say routing. And then also if we want to use SAS, normally you would maybe bring in Gulp and a Gulp SAS plugin, or you'd use Node SAS. Uh, we can just tell the Angular CLI to do that as well. Style is equal to SCSS. And you can also use less or the SASS version, but I'm going to use SCSS. And finally, my Angular site. So we'll name the project. Now the routing flag is going to add this app routing right here. And then the CSS flag is going to say styles.scss and then Angular CLI will handle compiling that to CSS. So we don't have to worry about that build step either. All right, and for the last time, code my Angular site. Let's take a look. Okay, source folder. Oh, no, I opened node modules. Source folder. We have our app, we have our routing module, our main parent app module, and then our first app component. And these are the three files that we're going to be working with to start our Angular app. So I know that went a little far into the weeds there, but really when you want to start an Angular app, install the Angular CLI, ng new, and add routing, add style.scss, and then just name my app. And then you're good to go.